Welcome back. I'm Dr. Chen, a physical medicine and rehab physician, aka physiatrist based in Pennsylvania. I've been asked a lot about the question regarding what's the difference between a physiatrist versus a physical therapist. So today we're going to delve deep into this topic and explain it fully. Physiatrists and physical therapists treat similar type of conditions. So what's their difference? First, we're going to talk about their education and training differences. So physiatrists are licensed medical doctors who finish their undergrad, then go into their medical school. After graduation, then they go into residency, which is four years under a specialty called physical medicine and rehab. Then they become a licensed physician. The specialty of physical medicine and rehab is similar to those of internal medicine, surgery, OBGYN, ophthalmology, etc. In their PM&R residency, which is the shorthand for physical medicine and rehab, physiatrists study and practice neuromuscular conditions. And they, are, they have the ability to diagnose, make the medical diagnosis and prescribe treatments, including medication and perform procedures for patients. They can also prescribe or refer a patient to physical therapy or other type of therapies. For example, occupational therapy, speech therapy, etc. For therapists, they can receive their education and training through an undergrad degree first. Then they can go into their graduate degree, which is usually a doctor degree of physical therapy, shorthand DPT, for three years. Usually, in the three years, they have half a year to one year of clinical experience, aside from classroom didactics teaching. Then they can pass their license exam, then go into practice. Usually, no residency is required after graduation. However, there are some residency and fellowship exist for physical therapists to enhance their specialty skills, for example, in neurology or orthopedics. So what's the difference in scope of practice between a physiatrist and a physical therapist? So physiatrists manage medical conditions as patients participate through their rehabilitation process. They can make a medical diagnosis and manage those diagnoses throughout the rehab process. Physiatrists will supervise the patient to make sure they are stable enough to participate in therapy and manage their medical conditions along the way. Those conditions can include pain management, neurogenic bowel and bladder, dysphagia, which is difficulty swallowing, and uh, spasticity, autonomic dysreflexia, and gait and movement ataxia. Furthermore, a physiatrist can also manage patients' chronic medical conditions, including hypertension, diabetes, coronary artery disease, COPD, heart failure, etc., to prevent further comorbidities. Physiatrists can, can also educate and teach preventative skills. A common misperception is that the physiatrists are the ones who actually perform the therapies. Actually, on the other hand, physiatrists are the medical doctors that make and manage those medical diagnoses and prescribe physical therapy so that those physical therapists can subsequently perform those therapies. So what's the scope of practice for physical therapists? They are movement specialists. They treat patients and improve their quality of life through prescribed exercises, hands-on care, and patient education. However, technically, they cannot diagnose patients with a medical diagnosis. PTs are trained in assessment of common neuromuscular conditions, including like shoulder pain, back pain, stroke, to design a individualized treatment plan and use physical modalities like heat, cold, electric stimulation to help patients improve their quality of life and reduce their pain. Usually patients uh, see physiatrists first, then they are referred by physiatrist to a physical therapist to perform therapy. Sometimes patient can directly see a physical therapist without a prescription or referral from the doctor. There are different regulations and stipulations regarding this in different states. For example, in my state of Pennsylvania, there is a regulation that patient can see the physical therapy first for 30 days before a formal referral from a licensed physician is needed. There are different limitations and provisions across different jurisdictions. So please look up the latest 
guideline slash policy regarding this. Despite those differences, so what's the commonalities between the two professions? So they, for most important of all, is they share the same care philosophy, which is improve the function and enhance the quality of life. Physiatrists will lead a multidisciplinary team, including the phys physical therapies, occupational therapy, and uh, speech therapy, etc., to form a comprehensive care plan and monitor their treatment progress and provide medical supervision. PTs and physiatrists communicate and collaborate with each other all the time to ensure patients receive the appropriate treatment and ultimately improve the function and quality of life. They treat similar spectrum of diseases, including neuromuscular condition, including issues like back pain, shoulder pain, stroke, spinal cord injury, amputation, brain injury, etc. PT are the, one of the key members of the therapy team led by the rehab physician and will help patients tremendously. If those all sounds too abstract, we can explain it in two simple hypothetical cases to help you understand better. First case, a 50-year-old male, Uncle Jack, referred by urgent care clinic to physiatry clinic for shoulder pain of two months. So I performed the medical history taking I did a physical exam of this patient and reviewed his x-ray taken in the clinic. So I diagnosed him with a rotator cuff syndrome. So I went through the diagnosis, the treatment and prevention of his condition. And I referred him to physical therapy and I specify in my prescription that it needs to be done two to three times a week for six weeks. And I specify the precaution of the physical therapy. Then I also prescribed pain medication and instructed time for follow-up. I also instructed the physical therapy to teach him about home exercise programs he can do after he finishes his six weeks of formal physical therapy. A couple of days later, Uncle Jack chose a physical therapy center that's close to his house. So the session begins. The PT did an assessment and designed a treatment plan individualized to Uncle Jack's diagnosis of rotator cuff syndrome. And the physical therapist will send me a report and treatment plan for me to sign off. So Uncle Jack went through two to three sessions of this physical therapy. About a, for a couple of weeks, he felt significant improvement. And when he followed up with me at my physiatry clinic, Uncle Jack was very happy about his progress. So that was the best case scenario. Sometimes, the therapy does not go as well as we expect. For example, in the second session, Uncle Jack, when doing physical exercise in a therapy center, he developed significant pain. And the physical therapist sent me a message about that, saying that Uncle Jack is not progressing well in the therapy. And can you see him earlier in his follow-up in your clinic to troubleshoot that issue? So Uncle Jack, a couple days later, followed up with me in my clinic and I re-examined him and started considering an injection therapy in his shoulder to help with the condition. After the injection, usually ultrasound guided, Uncle Jack experienced significant pain relief and he went back to the physical therapy center pain-free and he, he was able to perform physical therapy much better. And a couple weeks later, his condition significantly improved after the follow-up. He is very happy about the progress. Okay, case number two. An 80-year-old grandma Jane was admitted to inpatient rehab after suffering a significant stroke. She was unable to move her right side very well, has significant weakness, and has some difficulty swallowing and speaking. So I prescribed physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy for grandma Jane as an inpatient physiatrist. So grandma was able to progress pretty well initially in a couple of days. However, the physical therapy noticed that grandma Jane has developed significant tone in the right leg that causing her trip over all the time. So I examined grandma Jane and noticed that there is significant tone or muscle spasticity developing in the right leg that causing her to trip over. So I prescribed a anti-spasticity medication, for example, Baclofen. So grandma was able to progress pretty well. After a couple days, she was able to walk 200 feet with only minimal supervision from the physical therapist.
In the meantime, as an inpatient physiatrist, I also managed grandma's hypertension and diabetes, adjusted her medication, so to prevent future increased risk of additional stroke. After those therapy and my medical management, Grandma Jane was able to be discharged from rehab to back to her house. Six weeks later, after Grandma went back home, she was able to follow up with me and my physiatry clinic. Despite the oral antispastic medication, Grandma still developed some significant tone in the right upper arm that preventing her from doing activities of daily living. So I was able to inject with botulinum toxin into her muscle in the right arm to prevent further spasticity from developing, to maintain a good quality of life for her at home. Also, grandma was able to continue physical therapy in our patient clinic with PTs to continue stretch her arm and perform exercises that maintain her quality of life. That's a typical case of collaboration between a physiatrist and physical therapist in an inpatient setting for a stroke patient. There are a lot more that physiatrists and physical therapists can do besides those scenarios. But there are two very nice, typical, basic cases for you to better understand how physiatrists and PTs can work together. Hope you enjoy and I'll see you soon.